I think this year is that, is that we can't afford to let them bully us. Where they're really, really strong is on set pieces, you know? They're always bad when we're coming. And they seem to just get a performance. Everton are there for the taking. <clears throat> they are really there for the taking and, and I expect goals. Declan Rice has got a big part to play in that midfield because I felt last year they kind of dominated that midfield. They, they kind of overpowered us. Record is horrendous. I mean, that's like on par with when we go to Man City. This place, man. Yeah, I know, I know. Memories. I know. It's the memories. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to AFTV. We're outside Goodison Park for maybe the final time, Turkish and Robbie. We know obviously the Bradley Moore Dock Stadium's coming in next year. I read somewhere that it might not be ready for quite the start of the season, so anyway, we're not really talking about it too much, but this is a ground with a lot of history. I know you've been here a few times, Robbie. Yeah, it's got a lot of history. Um, not great history for us in recent no, times, no, no. but it's got a lot of history and it's a real old school football ground. As a matter of fact, I think it's one of the most unique football grounds in the country and it's got them old wooden... Yeah, yeah. You've been here, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Curtis. Uh, Curtis. <laughs> I've got <laughs> Curtis in my head now because we were just talking about Top Boy yeah. and, and, and the scouser that's in Top Boy, <laughs> you know what I mean? Curtis. But um, no, it's got that old wooden sort of terraces, which is really, really unique. Something that, I don't know, I've never seen that in any other ground no, in no. this country. So yeah. it's fantastic. Uh, Turkish, you've been here before? Yeah, many times, many times. Um, been here for some wins and been here for some frustrating nights, frustrating results. It's the last one here and we really need to get the three points. Yeah, we really, really do. It is Goodison Park. It is a, a Sunday kickoff, 4.30pm UK time. Um, and like you've mentioned, our record here isn't brilliant. Let's just uh, remind ourselves of it painfully. Shocking. A 1-0 defeat last season, uh, a 2-1 defeat the year before that, a 2-1 defeat the year before that, a 0-0 draw. Uh, that was when Arteta and Edu were here in the stands, Smith Rowe kind of getting his first start <coughs> in an England shirt and a 1-0 uh, defeat as well before that. So winless and our last five. Can you guys remember our last win here? Some of the goal scorers, you remember anything about was it? That, was that when I found the, it really hard the, to remember. Alexis Sanchez? Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, he scored yeah. a hat-trick, remember? It was a hat-trick. It wasn't, it wasn't a hat-trick. Was that a 5-1 or something? It was a 5-2. Yeah, 5-2, yeah. Monreal, Ozil, Lacazette, Ramsey and Sanchez. It was Arsene Wenger's last visit here. The, the record, Arsene Wenger was the last that, Arsenal manager to win here. That record is horrendous. I mean, that's like on par with when we go to Man City or when we go to yeah. Anfield, you know what I mean? Like, four defeats and one draw. Struggle. That's unbelievable. And you know the worst thing about it, right, is that a lot of times we come here, a bit like this weekend, where they're struggling. Mm -hmm. So remember last year we came here, right? They were on the floor, mm -hmm. but they just brought in Sean Dyche and they got that new yeah. manager bounce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got that new manager bounce. So and they, the year before that, I remember it clearly. Right, because I got COVID, right? I came to the came to the stadium. I remember we came up, right? I got absolutely it was a Monday night, it was pouring down with rain, and then they took us apart in the second half. I think like Richarlison, yeah, yeah. um, Damari Gray scored a screamer yeah, if I yeah, remember rightly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then on the way home now we're driving home and we're all sort of <coughs> And then we wake up in the morning COVID. and then like Cecil rings, we go, yeah, I did a COVID test, man, I got COVID. And then everyone in the car got COVID. I mean, listen, it's just been horrendous coming here. Yeah. It is about time we came here and got a result. But it's weird because it doesn't matter that they'll be bad. And at the moment, they're bad. They're really bad at the moment. But I'm not even going by that too much because we're, they're always bad when we come here. Let me and ask. they seem to just get a performance. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, you, what? I'll, I'll take COVID if it comes with three points. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> you, you, you mentioned the new manager bounce. Is there such thing, something that you might have wanted at some point, Turkish for Arsenal? Is there such thing as a new ownership bounce? Seven 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 partners are apparently close to a takeover. Yeah. Um, is that an excuse we could have lined up? No, no, no. I've never <laughs> when heard we make it with this six. Yeah, I haven't, yeah, heard, heard, of all of those I haven't heard of a new owner bounce. But listen, there is rumours that they are, you know, in discussions about potentially, you mm. know, acquiring new owners or new owners acquiring Everton Football Club. 
Will it have any effect on the pitch? No, they've been terrible this season. But like Rob said, they've been terrible in, in games against us in the past. But our record here speaks for itself. We've just got to come and get yeah. the job done. But do you think we're just a match-up for Everton that suits them? I mean, but you can't really explain how they've been in such poor form and yet we're winless in five. Their last you know, few years haven't been good. We're not even, these last five seasons, winless. We're not even going back to like the, the Martinez days where they nearly got into the top four and they yeah. had Lukaku and, and you know, Mertens and good players that mm. you thought, OK, you can see how they can hurt you. This, you know, Everton have been on the decline. And we have struggled, and we struggled. We played poorly in these games. Like, I, I was, they've not even yeah. been like um, smashing grabs. Like we've come here, we've played terribly. Arteta, for whatever reason, can't seem to get a win at the club he used to play for for so long. Yeah, it's yeah, weird, true. Isn't it? So he, yeah. he played it, didn't he? I mean, that's it. You, you, you hit the nail on the head there. It ain't like we've come here mm. and we battered them, and they've like nicked it. Yeah. Last year they deserved to win. They were much better than us, yeah. mm -hmm. right? They, you know, they had a game plan. Yeah. They executed it really, really well. The year before that, they bullied us mm -hmm. and they won. It's not like we, like I said, they they've deserved their victories here. Mm. So something has to change from us, you know. And it's baffling because we, I thought on the road last year we were brilliant. Went away from home on yeah. the front foot with most teams. Really, really took it to them. For some reason, when we've come here, we've been very lacklustre. Yeah. Now, I'm hoping that the fact that there's been a little international break, there's been a little break for both sides, that we're going to come and be a bit more on it. You know what I mean? And, you know, the other thing that's quite significant is that it is normally, anyway, a difficult place for anybody to come to. Despite how badly they're playing, it's never easy to win here. But they've lost their two home games there, haven't they? That, that's been... Yeah. Quite significant. They lost to Wolves. Yeah, and Fulham. And they lost to Fulham. Although, the one thing I would say, I watched both of those games and yeah. they did create a lot of chances. They, mm -hmm. they they just have not got a goal scorer to put them away. Yeah, and this is what I wanted to ask you about, Turkish, because I, I also, kind of catching those games, the extended highlights, I did a Jordan. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> oh, yeah, you're I'll, not an Everton fan, so I think, that's <laughs> what, I think you're all right. Yeah, I'm sure the Forever Everton podcast <laughs> will forgive me for that one. But I, I also came away thinking, you know what? One point from 12 sounds like a continuation of basically the form Everton has shown for many years now. Well, for many, for the last two, certainly in these relegation battles. But actually, I don't think they're actually a fair reflection on how Everton have played in these games. And one player that we were talking about in the car on the way up was um, Beto, Beto. Yeah, yeah. Um, he, he looked a handful against Sheffield United. He he looks like their main threat. Yeah. You might as well just say it as it is. He looks like their main threat. Listen, a couple of years ago, Calvert-Lewin, there was a lot of hype around him. He had a great goal scoring season, but it just has he hasn't kicked on from there. The injury's been a problem. Yeah. Real problem for him, yeah. It has been a problem. And, and obviously, along the way, Richarlison has left the club too. So they haven't, and Iwobi's left this, this yeah, summer. And no, Iwobi's Iwobi. Was probably it was good the, last year. The shining light for them last year at, at many points, yeah. especially being moved centrally. But this season, it, it looks like Beto. Yeah. And that's it. Mm. That's why, as much as I've, I've seen bits and bobs of him this season and I've been impressed, I look overall and think Arsenal should be able to, to handle him. Well, I'd hope so. I mean, against Sheffield United, he looked a handful. I think that I think what Everton have is real power. You know, we, we, we talk about Arsenal being good on the ball and, and they play well. And also Arsenal show real work rate. I think what we struggled with last year was Decore, Onana, Beto. Yeah. And they've even got players like, whether it be James Garner, who's six foot, that you can bring in as well. You know, they will do, you know, they've got Dan Juma out wide. They've got players that... I think, yeah, tall centre-backs, Tarkovsky, I can go on and on. They've got players, I think, physically, yeah. I could see Arsenal struggling with. And I think that's where we couldn't play our football last year because we just were so knocked out of our comfort zone. I think this year is that, is that we can't afford to let them bully us. Where they're really, really strong is on set-pieces, you know? Um, yeah. And they've tried to work it a lot for set-pieces. And then, you know, like you said, they've got giants like Tarkovsky and Anana and people like this there and now that better is another big guy yeah. right so big physical team that will try and get, you know work off set pieces and they're good on set pieces mm -hmm. that's how they won last year's game off of a set piece so this game Gabriel has to start for me no free at the back playing around with this one yeah it has to be because there's going to be a physical game so surely Mikel Arteta will recognize that and I feel if you know Another key to it could be, because last year, I don't know if you guys remember the game, they dominated the midfield. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just feel now with Declan Rice in there, mm. you know, could that sort of change things a bit? Yeah. Havertz hmm. is going to have to turn up in a game like this because this is one of those games that yeah. it's a physical battle. I mean, I saw that he had an assist 
for Germany mm -hmm. um, against France. He has to turn up in this game if he starts. And do you think this international break <coughs> and now moving on to the Arsenal stuff would have benefited Arsenal? Because you know, nearly two weeks ago now, we saw Arsenal with that really dramatic late win against Man United. We're all very euphoric, but I think we all also had the kind of awareness to say that wasn't Arsenal at their best. Yeah. But you know, can you and you can make a case both ways, maybe can you make a case that actually that kind of euphoric moment and then being able to just sit on it for a few weeks is probably a good thing for Arsenal in terms of trying to get ourselves in the right headspace and right or, or do you think we needed a game a bit quicker after that? I, d I mean I don't know. Yes, no. The reason I say no because two of the well, two of the signings that have come in this summer, they both went away on international break. Ideally, you want the mm -hmm. new signings to be part of that international break to help bed them sure. in a little bit more tactically. More so Havertz than Rice, to be mm -hmm. honest, because Rice has hit the ground running at Arsenal, whereas Havertz hasn't. So I would have liked Arteta to be able to work with Havertz over the last couple of weeks. He hasn't had a poor first game for Germany, but he, he, he made up for it in the second coming off the bench and getting an assist. So hopefully he's a bit more confident coming into this game. And Robbie's right. Havertz has been brought in really for his physical presence. That's what I keep on being told. He's tall, he can win aerial duels, and he, he has won the most aerial duels for Arsenal this season. Mm -hmm. But we just haven't seen anything come from it yet. So I'm hoping to see a lot more come from it. I think Everton are there for the <clears> taking. <throat> mm -hmm. They are really there for the taking, and, and I expect goals. Mm -hmm. And if Havertz starts, similar to the last couple, I expect him to be on the end of something. So who are the crucial players for Arsenal then? Who, who are we looking at that we think, we're, we're going to need you to play well to unlock a pretty stubborn Everton side, I imagine, will face. I, I, I'd say Martin Odegaard, mm -hmm. obviously, because he's that guy who can unlock teams, you know what I mean? He's that driving force for Arsenal. Um, Saka, mm -hmm. who's so far, you know, people say, he, somebody saying to me the other day, he's been poor. He hasn't been poor. No, he hasn't been poor. He's still contributed. I mean, even the last game, people forget it was his corner. Yeah, that, you know, we scored from the, you know, made us two one up. So, but we haven't seen a scintillating Saka um, yet. So, would love to see that in this game. And I think Declan Rice has got a big part to yeah. play in that midfield because I felt last year they kind of dominated that midfield. They they kind of overpowered us. They were they were a bit quicker, mm -hmm. sharper than us, stronger than us. And um, as I said, they deserved their win last year. It was not. You know, no, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't walk away thinking, ah, we deserve to get something out of this. I walked away really, really disappointed on our performance. Mm -hmm. So, a fast start is when you come here, especially where they are at the moment, a fast start with a goal or two. Kill them off. And that will, you know, this crowd here that I've been coming here for so many years, when, <laughs> how you doing, bro? Mm -hmm. when, they're, when they're on it, they're on it, man. Yeah. It's one of the loudest places. Their fans are brilliant. But I know their fans as well. When they're sort of like where they are now, and if they was to go a goal or two down, they can turn the other way. You know what I mean? I mean, at the moment, they haven't won a game this season. Yeah. So, you know, but I just want Arsenal to put, and every fan just put that all out of the way at the moment because we've been here before with these lot. Yep. Yeah. Where yeah. they've been on horrendous form and they still turned it on against us. And I want to add that, listen, we were talking about the first game against Everton last season, although, you know, the, the, the away one, but the home fixture wasn't easy either. Mm -hmm. I remember goal. Wasn't that the one we went into well, half-time? No, we, we won. Yeah, we, we, it was we went tight. into half-time yeah. scoring yeah. two goals. Yeah. Two goals, yeah. Against the runner play. Then Partey yeah. came on for the second half and that's when we yeah. actually got control of the midfield. So no, last we, we season against easy. Everton, we always beat them at home. three halves, they, they pretty yeah. much controlled the midfield. But that's why yeah. Rice for me is the one. Yeah, yeah, that's Rice fair. is important. My, mine's, mine's a shock one because I don't actually think it'll start. But mine's Fabio Vieira only because it mm. might be a game that requires a bit of magic and off the bench he's been doing that. Yeah. I can kind of see this being a little bit, you know, a nil nil a one one as we enter 60, 65 minutes and actually Arteta goes, well, listen, we've got to win here. And, and that leads me on to my final question. I hear this a lot, said a lot, and I, I kind of agree with them, but I don't know what the science is behind it. I don't know what the numbers prove. But... Do you think to win the title you have to win at Goodison? Like there seems to be this. I remember the, the Chelsea teams where uh, City, remember, City didn't win at Goodison last year, did they? It was one-one. Mm. No, no. Uh, at the Etihad, it was one-one. Here they won oh, three 0 okay. Harland. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I think of that Conte side where you know Tottenham was starting to chase a little bit, yeah. kind of a last minute, and they went and won. I can't remember what the scores, but Pedro scored a great goal. Like Goodison's kind of always seen as this this kind of test because of the fans, because mm. of its history, because of some of the players they have, of course, and. 
you know, Arsenal failed to win it last year. Okay, it was early in the season, but it did kickstart a little bit of a poor run. Do you think Arsenal just need to get this off their back and just be like, yeah, we won at Goodison, a real test for any team that's going for the title. Done. Let's get on with the rest of the season. Do, yeah. do you think it's crucial, or? You know, well, I think at the moment yeah. all wins are crucial. You know what I mean? Because we did drop points against Fulham. Um, I think. You know, one of the things that we did pretty well last year, we went to a couple of stadiums where we've had a poor record at. Remember yeah, that's true. our record at Tottenham? Yep. And, and we won convincingly. I want us to come here and do that. We cannot really th hope for a better time to be playing Everton. Mm -hmm. they're, they're in a bit of a mess at the moment. You know what I mean? The fans are... Uh, there's a lot of disquiet. You know, I know there's, there's talk of this new ownership mm -hmm. coming in, but it's not done yet. That's still a, a long way to go on that. They haven't won a game. They've lost two games at home. We cannot have hoped for a better time to be playing them. We've just got to come here and execute. Um, mm. And I think we'll be all right. But yeah. it's another one of these big grounds that here, Old Trafford, um, Etihad. And you wouldn't be putting, think of putting those this ground in with those. But it's just down the road at Anfield. One of them grounds, we just never seem to go away at winner. We've got to turn that around yeah, if uh -huh. we're going to win titles. So... Yeah, we need to win. Oh, this would be a this would be a great place to start. Yeah. At. I think it's a major psychological boost. If they, I think I think they'll go away. If they win here, they'll go away thinking we've got three points at Goodison. We don't have to come here and worry about it for the rest of the season. Um, Robbie said, "There's no better time." You know, mention the defeats. Mention the two defeats at home. They haven't mm -hmm. scored at home yet yeah. uh, in the league. So, what are you predicting? Two one Everton? <laughs> no, <laughs> we've got to win this one. We've got to win this one. Well, are we on to predictions, yeah. Yeah, let's do it. I'm, I've gone 3-1 on Forever Arsenal. I'm tempted to say 4. What did I say? I said 2-0, I think. I oh, always forget, yeah. you know. I'm tempted to go 4 because, like you said, an early goal off the back of their first, what, 3-4 results of the season, the, the crowd turns, this international break becomes a myth. It's literally rolling on to the next fixture. So an early goal for us, I think we take the game to them and we need that game where we open up a little bit. That We haven't done that yet so far this season. So for me, I'm going to go, listen, there's nothing on the line for this one. So I'm going to say 4-1 Arsenal. Okay, I'm going for a nervy 2-0. Yeah. I was going to go 2-0, um, but then... Go for it. What's stopping you? This place, man. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know, memories. I know. It's the memories. I know. Um, yeah, let me go 2-0. Let me go 2-0. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's um, come here, be disciplined, do our job. Listen, player for player, we're a much better team. Even okay. their fans would admit that. We've, we, we've got the tools to win this game. We've got a very strong bench. Jesus is back as well now. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, come on, man. This has got to be the time when we come here and get a win. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's been some games we've come up here. There's been injuries to certain players and stuff. We're not making any excuses, but there's none this time. You know what I mean? Um, apart, apart from Thomas Partey and obviously the Timber one, we know it. But we've got Declan Rice now as well. So, 2-0. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not a decider. It's, it's, it's not no. a decider this early on in the season. But, mm. It's but, important it could be a damaging blow. I look yeah. at last season, I think the first damaging blow we had come against Everton. Yeah, yeah it was here. And, yeah. uh, you know, when mm. you look at the knockout come the end of the season, the first damaging blow came against Everton. I think when you look at us two points behind City, if we want to win this weekend at City World, we go four or five points behind City. The task itself, mm. when you're both on zero points, is difficult enough, let alone four or five points behind yeah. going into United. No, sorry, going into City and Tottenham and yeah. the Emirates in the next three games. We need Could go to win. points. Yeah, you because know, you say that about going points behind City, but there's many other teams around us as well. Yeah. We yeah. go points behind as well. So this is a game we have to win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, to win. you want to stay with that, with that chase. Stay in that pack. Stay in that yeah. Agreed. All right, three jobs for everyone. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and your predictions. Secondly, download the AF2 Plus app because there is a Predict 11 video coming out very, very soon. Me and Robbie, we're going to build our 11s. You can build yours too with us and let us know on social media as well by tagging us and all that what your 11 would be and thirdly keep up to date with everything on AFTV on the match day as it's happening we'll be reacting to every goal and Robbie will be here to uh, do the fan cam speak to the fans as well and all that everyone a big big thank you there's a fourth job I didn't even mention subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and uh, you'll be alerted to any video we upload as we upload them catch you very soon